here we are in part two of context propagation. Context. You will recall from part one that context is an object that we flow along the path of code execution. So this is how we transmit data through a program as it's executing. Propagation, as you may recall, is how we flow that data between programs over network calls. So context needs to track the path of code execution within a program. And we're going to show how this works in open telemetry. We're going to use Go as our example because Go has a very simple and explicit way of passing context around. So it's easy to learn. But then we're going to show why this simple, explicit way of passing context around is painful and potentially harmful and potentially should even be changed in Go. So here we go. So let's start with how context is defined in the open telemetry specification. It's really complicated. You get a value and you set a value. Woohoo. One thing to note, however, is that contexts are immutable. So when you set a new value in a context, you actually don't change your existing context, you get a new context. When you think about it, that makes sense because we're talking about context in which a program is executing. So you wouldn't be mutating a context, you would be creating a new context for new code to execute in without retroactively changing the context of some other code uh, that was holding on to the old context object. This also makes context thread safe, which is nice, but the real reason why it's here is because you don't wanna be mutating context when you create a new context. Okay. How does this look in Go? Well, Go has a context object. Very convenient. Go's context object has an interface that's fairly similar to what OpenTelemetry defines. There's a with value function that lets you set a value and create a new context. So, okay, that's nice. How would OpenTelemetry make use of this context object? Well, basically, we store data in it. So you have some kind of span data object, uh, trace ID, span ID, yada, yada. You would put that in a context under a special key. In practice, we wrap all of this up. So you have a tracer. That tracer starts a new span. It gets past a context when it starts that new span and returns a new context along with a span object. The span object allows you to control the span lifecycle by ending the span, and the new context allows you to pass the span plus everything else to the next function in line. So here we are inside of example two, the inner function being called by example. And in this function, we want to set an attribute on the current span. So the way we do that is we call span from context, which pulls the span out of the current context, and then set some attributes on it, off we go. There's a problem though, which is what if we have a function in our call chain that's part of the request path that does not take a context? Well, if we want to flow tracing through our system, we need to throw context through a system. So we need to add context to this function signature, which means we're gonna be breaking APIs left and right. Every place that did not currently use context for something like cancellation is gonna need to have context added to its API. And breaking APIs is sad. Sad, I tell you, sad. And it's just gonna get worse because open telemetry is going to widely expand the use of context in Go. Tracing is applied far more broadly than cancellation, which is the current main use of context within a Go application. So Go has a concept of deadlines and cancellations and timeouts and things like that. And that's the main use of the context object. Open telemetry and tracing is a new cross-cutting concern that hasn't been widely deployed in the Go community yet. Once you've added something like tracing to your system, you're gonna take that context object and you're gonna flow it across library boundaries. You're gonna be flowing it through code that currently doesn't care about tracing. It might care about tracing in the future. For example, it might want to log something 
uh, or add an attribute or start a new span or make a metric or whatever, but it doesn't want to do that right now. However, code on the other side of that, such as say an HTTP client, does need access to that context so that it can propagate it to the next service. So it's very important that context flows through all of your code. And in fact, if you look at best practices coming from Google, they actually require that context is passed as the first argument in every function on the call path between incoming and outgoing requests. So they just say, do this everywhere, which is good advice. However, they mostly get to do that because they're Google and Google writes almost all of their code in-house. Google does not leverage a lot of third-party open source code. The rest of us who don't work at Google, we run into problems. A number of people in the community did not exactly get the memo on context and perhaps rightly think the idea of tacking a context parameter onto the beginning of every function reflexively is sort of a bad practice. Certainly it doesn't look that great. There's also some confusion about the value of value in context because they tend to only use context for cancellation. But context is not for cancellation. Context is for cross-cutting concerns in general, and explicit context is going to make those cross-cutting concerns break other people's code. So how do we take this, slice off this explicit context, and get as close to this as we possibly can? This leads us to context management, which is how we do this in just about every other language. The context management API as defined in the open telemetry specification has three core functions, attach, detach, and get current. Get current returns you the current context. Attach takes a context and makes it current. It returns a token, which you can use to detach the context later, which means the prior context will now be current. Attach and detach can then be packaged up in higher level functions. The most common pattern here is a closure where you take a context and apply it to a function so that it's current for the life cycle of that function. So what does context management look like in practice? Let's check out Python. Python has these lower level primitives and we use them to build higher level functions. So in this case, we have a tracer that tracer has a function called start as current span. It works with the with keyword to create a closure. Inside of that closure, get current span returns the span that was started. Simple enough, right? This looks very clean and elegant. But notably, these two functions are not currently possible in Go. But what would it look like if we added attach and detach to Go? If we took the context package and added three methods, attach, detach, and current, and gave them access to some kind of special state under the hood, what would that allow us to do? Well, first we could implement current span. Current span would take the current context, pull the span off of it if it was available, and return it. Easy peasy. What about higher level convenience functions such as with span? The with span method on the tracer will start a span, attach it to a function, and then when that function ends, end the span. This is a convenient form of lifecycle management, both for spans and for functions. This is a convenient way to manage span state. How would we implement this? Inside the with span method, we would first call the current context we would start a new span with that context as its parent to ensure that we're taking part in the trace. Start span returns a new context and a span. We take that new context and we attach it, which will now make it current. We then call our closure. Then when our closure finishes, we detach the context. After that, we call span.end and the cycle is complete. So I want to stop here and just quickly note a couple of things about this implementation. Note that we did not expose some kind of thread local, go routine local something as a variable type in Go. There was no need to add a concept such as this in order to get this functionality. Also note that this dynamic scoping that we've now added to Go looks just like ordinary code. It's true that current attach and detach have access to some special state, but they expose it through basic functions. This is pretty similar to say how the sync atomic package manages special state that you can't get elsewhere in Go. So what does this new API look like in practice? Well, let's go back to our earlier example where we have manual context propagation and replace it with our new primitives. It looks much more elegant. 
The only function that has to deal with context and state is the function that's managing the span. Within the rest of your application code, you have your cross-cutting concerns available whenever you need them, and you didn't break any of your APIs. If you are someone who works on the Go programming language itself, please consider adding this or something like it to Go too. We vetted this model in a number of other programming languages. It handles edge cases very well while also making the common cases very elegant. And that is that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this deep dive into open telemetry context and how it works under the hood. In upcoming videos, we'll be covering propagation and how that works and how you can take this context propagation system and apply it to other domains beyond observability. See you then.